It's me, Nim Sony. Welcome back to VR. Today we are back in the uh, in Half-Life Alex, and we're on the second episode of how it works. Uh, in this video, we won't be talking about movement anymore. Although there is certain things about it, which is mantling, uh, that I could describe. Uh, but what in we, what we're doing instead is talking about the hands systems, uh, the the way that the physics hands work. And uh, well, the works the way that the hands work in general. Now I've going to start this uh, uh, start this uh, little dialogue going so that we can open that door very soon. Uh, but the first thing I want to talk about is actually not the physics in itself, but rather uh, the hands. There are actually three sets of hands in the game. That might not make any sense, uh, but uh, one of them is an inherent element to VR. And the other two are necessary for the way this game handles its physics. So, what are these elements? Well, the first one you can see uh, directly in the menus. This hand here, what you're seeing, is the tracking hand. So these are actually perfectly following my real world hands and have no physics or anything like that. They are never offset from my tracking. That is the raw tracking that you're seeing in the menu. And of course, they somewhat match in game, but in game, we do have some physics hands that affect things as well. That's not always the case. However, the things that are the main element are the tracking that we're talking about here. So tracking, always the same. You have two of them and they're always there no matter what. Most of the time, your teleport point comes from your tracking. Unless, of course, in some cases, it actually goes towards the physics. So you can see if I push my hand, you can actually see the teleport line moving with my hand. However, if I if I if I pause the game, you can see I'm actually pointing directly and my my other hand is actually sticking in to that hand. So there we go. You can push that and you can see that actually it's being pushed along. Right? So that the teleport line is actually coming from the physics hand, which I will mention as the second one. So the first set we've got is the pure tracking, which you see here, right? The second set we've got is the physics hand. Now the physics hand actually collides with everything in the scene. However, the thing with the physics hand is it is always there and it's never actually connected to anything. Now that may not make sense, but we'll get to that in a moment. It's never physically connected to anything. It is never stopped by anything other than the movement system and I'll explain that as well. The third element is, uh, well the third set of hands is what you're seeing. So the tracking, you can see it here, you can see it in the menu. The, um, the animated hands, the actual visual hands, you see them all the time of course because they move around and they connect to things and stuff like that. And then the physics hand, you can't really directly see it but in most cases, the visual hand will try and follow it as well, right? So how, how does this all fit together? Well, it depends on what you're doing. So the game has a certain element to it, which is that it tries to make your visuals look a little bit more natural in the game world, as opposed to matching your tracking. So the first thing it does is actually manipulate your hands, uh, depending on what you're doing. So when your hands are near, near, near to something, which you can see here, it actually uh, manipulates the animation, but we're gonna ignore the animation for now. What it does as well is it actually moves the hand position. What you're seeing though, is not the physics hand being manipulated. So here you can see I can push this hand, but that's where it actually hits. So you can see that the physics hand has actually offset here. The animated hand, the visual hand, is separate to the physics hand. And you know what the easiest way to see that is? With that teleport line. Like I said, that teleport line is actually matching our physics right now. So if I put my hand like this, you can see how it offsets from that physics. And the same thing applies in other situations as well. Like when you're moving towards an object like this. So you can see, I'll keep my hand straight like this and you can see it rotates towards that thing. Now there's a very slight blend so that it tries to match my tracking. In reality, what I'm doing is this, but it's sort of mostly matching 
the actual point here before I grab it, right? And again, you can see the physics is actually matching the track, matching the uh, teleport line there, and you can see how the physics hand is separate, completely separated from the visual hand. So this is how we're handling uh, the idea of what you're seeing and how it manipulates physics as well. They are separated. You don't directly attach your hands to the physics systems. Now, me in my own work, I actually have done that. In my personal work, my, my visual hands are directly connected to the physics hands. So whenever you see the, the virtual hands, the visual hands doing something, the actual physics are doing that in my games. That's not the case in pretty much every other build that you've seen. Uh, now, here, the, the thing I mentioned was that the physics doesn't actually connect to anything. Let's have a look at what's going on. So here, I mentioned that I can actually push on my hand here, right? And you can see from the teleport line that it is affected. However, I can teleport while holding something. So let's hold something here. And now let's look at where my teleport line is. There's something weird going on. That teleport line is obviously not matching what my visual hand is actually doing. What it's actually doing is matching my physics hand. So why exactly is my physics hand not here? Well, this thing here is not physics. And you can tell because if I push on it, and you can see that I'm actually pushing on it. Right? Oh, it's... It tried to teleport me on top. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> you can actually stand on the antenna. Wonderful. Anyways, so point is, if I hit it, nothing happens. It doesn't slide down. It's only when you're grabbing it that it actually slides down. That's not a joint. That's not physics at all. This is just a, 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 an animated motion. That's, that's how it works, right? And what actually happens is this physics hand, you can see if I push on it, you see how it's actually still there. It's still there. It's not stopped colliding with anything. But this actual thing here has been grabbed by the visual hand. The physics hand doesn't actually match it. Now, you're probably thinking, okay, well, this object is not physics. So therefore, that's why the physics hand is actually floating around. What if you're holding a physics object? Well, well, well. Then something weird happens. And then... What we end up seeing, uh, in fact, I'm going to use this. This is very important right here because this I can hold with two hands. Then something really weird happens. Let me show you what happens. I grab it with two hands and then look at my teleport line, right? You can see that my teleport line is actually not directly connected to this, this object here. However, the thing with my teleport line is there's something really special about it. It's still connected to my physics hand which is still physics. As you can see, it hits this wall. And you can see that it actually rolls as well. Look at it roll. Look at it, look at it actually sliding and hitting things. And you can see that directly when I actually try to hit something. In fact, let me just, there we go. Give it a nice uh, height position. And you can see that, he, ooh, you can see that here. When I keep my teleport line active, in fact, I'm going to have to do it with something that's near uh, a space. When I keep my teleport line active, you can see where my physics hand is. And you can see how I'm able to manipulate this bottle while I'm holding this can. While I'm holding the watering can. If I don't have my, my uh, teleport line active, it actually looks even cooler. Because what I'm actually doing then is this. Like magic, I'm able to move the bottle without my hand. That's because the physics hand is actually separate and never jointed to an object, ever. It's literally never jointed to anything, right? The physics hand is always active and it's where your teleport line actually comes out from. So yeah, you actually collide with walls to prevent your teleport line from being inside a wall, right? And coming out from inside a wall, you actually collide with walls. However, <laughs> It, it, it's not what you're seeing, right? The collision is still active in all cases as well. Now, that leads on to some other weird things. Because here, like I said, this is a physics object and this is not. So what you can do is actually have both active at the same time. 
let's try and do that. Ta-da! So here, now without my other hand, look and you can see I'm letting go and, and releasing it. Here I've got this slider active, which is not a physics object. So the physics joint that the game uses to create the physics object holding is still allowed to be independent. This object, however, is stuck nicely onto, on, onto my, my joint. So I can still move this can, but the slider, the slider is also active at the same time. Here's the coolest part. And this is what I was saying earlier, where we've got actually three elements. Well, here we've got four. We've got this sliding one, which is where my visual hand is, entirely based on the slider. And then we've got the can, which is actually a separate physics object. And then we've got our physics hand, which is not colliding with the can, but it collides with everything else. Let me show you. Grab. So now I'm still grabbing this canister, right? There's still I'm still grabbing this can with my other hand, as you can see. Right? When I release it, it it's back here, back here because I'm holding it. And with my teleport line, you can still see that my other hand, my physics hand, is still there. In fact, if I hit it here, you can see now <laughs> that I'm holding this can while my physics hand is actually being tracked by my visual hand now. So here's the weird part now. You can actually see my hand being pushed about. So now if I grab this canister, watch this. You see how it, it hits into the wall and the canister is actually affected by my hand hitting a, 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 a collider. So the weirdest part about this game is that actually the, the physics object is following not your tracking directly like your physics hand does. So your physics hand is a physics object floating in air that follows your tracking, which of course is this you can see in, 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 my, in my space. So you can see no, no physics, right? But the can actually follows the physics hand, which is incredibly awkward. So what you have in, in essence is we've got tracking that is followed by our physics hand that is then followed by the object we're holding. So it always hits things when we actually try and move them. It's really, really unusual. It's very cool, but it's also very weird. I've got something even cooler for you. Some things that you actually believe are physics objects are not at all. So for example, this door here, yeah, sure, we can grab it and we can slide it. And again, of course, our physics hand is still separate. You can see me hitting it here, right? But that's not all. This is actually not a physics object. As you can see, I can't actually push it. My hand just goes right through. But if I grab it very easily, it slides. That's all animated. That's just a mechanic. That's not a physics object. Now we've got something really special to talk about, which is how then are we able, because this is obviously matching my physics hand when I'm not holding something, right? So this is all just the physics hand. How then is it able to move around so perfectly when I'm changing speed almost instantly, right? And that you can actually see very easily when you put your hand towards something. So here, if I move it, and you can see again with my, 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 my teleport line. Oh, actually you can't because it's, it's on the physics hand. So when I'm moving my hand, right? So here, for example, here, I'm, my hand's actually here, right? My real hand is over here, right? But here it actually gets stuck. So I'm just going to keep my hands together. So this is where both of my hands are right now. You see, right? So obviously there, there, there's some natural physics to it. And if my hand was behind here, and then I tried to put it together, here my hands, you can hear the, my, my controllers clipping together. They are touching together, but that hand can't get here because physics says no. However, how is it here then? <laughs> well, what's happening is, and, and this is really clear when you start doing something like this. I'm going to put my hand here. Watch what happens. You see how the hand always stays in front of objects. Now this is actually much more easy to show when we've got some draws and I'll probably show that in a, in a bit as well. But you can just show it here as well. So if I just give it a crouch, here you can see I can move around and obviously if I put my hand here, it hits this object. However, if I put my hand underneath, oh that didn't work very well. If I put my hand underneath, 
you can see it goes on top, right? It's really weird. What's happening is, and this is something that was actually kind of mentioned by Valve themselves in posts on Twitter. What was happening is we had a discussion about whether or not Half-Life would have arms and whether it should. Valve or someone at Valve, someone somewhere, mentioned that actually what they're doing is they are doing some simulated arms. Personally, I wouldn't call it simulated arms because in actuality what it is, is a trace of the shape of your hand into where the hand is. However, where is that trace coming from? It's not coming from anywhere along your body because none of that is actually calculated. None of that is reliable information. We only have tracking on the head and the hands. What it's doing instead is tracing from the, from the head outwards and hitting the wall. And wherever it hits, it positions the hand. So you can see here, in reality, my hand just sort of rolls along the wall. Whereas if I'm in a movement system, I can very easily, smoothly rotate my hand, right? So what the game's actually doing when we move is it's not relying on physics. Instead, what it's doing is positioning the hand directly. It does that when you're moving without hitting an object, and it does that when you're hitting an object as well. It traces out. If I can get the hand where you're, where you're placing it, it'll just place it there. If not, it'll place it at the closest point. And then as soon as you stop moving, it corrects it using actual physics because what it's doing is tracing that physics shape but stopping and it's positioning it directly. There's no physics involved. So how about what happens with physics objects then? How's about physics objects? How do they work then? Well, physics objects don't do exactly the same thing. You can see how they're kind of getting pushed about while the hand itself is doing that. So here you can see how it jumps in but the can, the can is not doing that. The can is still getting pushed about by physics, rotating and whatnot, and sometimes getting pushed through, through the wall. That's because the can is just being repositioned to where my hand is. It's, it, it depends on, of, of course, whether the hand is being traced and hits a wall, that's fine. But the thing is, that object still only goes based on where the hand is. You see how the hand gets pushed back, but the object doesn't. It just moves to where the hand is being moved to. So you're still getting that fake movement, right? You're still getting that fake movement, but uh, in order to keep the tracking from, from going whoop, whoop, and you can see this if I kind of stepped uh, to the right very quickly myself. So here, I'm keeping my hand completely still, and you can see that in my tracking here, right? I'm keeping my hand rotated completely still. I'm going to hold it with my other, with my, whoop, did a teleport there. I'm going to hold my arm with my other hand, nice and solid, right? So there we go. I'm just moving with my whole body from left to right. I should have had my camera on today, but uh, there we go, right? So you can see here that this can, this, this dustbin, right, gets wobbled about. However, when I do the same thing with fake locomotion, nothing. That's because there's no velocity. There's no real physics going on. But that leads to another problem. How exactly does the game handle cans of objects? So here we've got a complete store of objects, which I just shattered most of them, thanks to me pressing a button that I didn't expect to do. Right? So now here we, we have a bunch of things sitting on top of this. How exactly... I'm just going to do it like that. There we go. How exactly are they... Oh, it's a one-handed object. How exactly are they not being wobbled about as well? Look at this. I'm, I'm shaking it quite wildly here. In reality, if I shook it, you'd see them move. So how exactly are they just staying completely still when I'm moving around like mad? Well, what the game does is it actually has an intelligent zone. And you can tell this because if I put objects on the other side, stand still you can see that they just stay in place they don't actually follow the object that i'm holding as you can see you see how it just stays in place when i move that doesn't happen on the inside and you're probably thinking ah but hang on a minute so it has these connections that, that prevent it from dropping okay well let's have a look in here then 
Do, 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 do. I'm going to place it perfectly in the center there. Right in the center. Right? So now I'm going to move. Oh, other than this box here. Oh, it's going to be difficult. There we go. Place it right in the center. And now you can see I'm able to move really quickly and the can doesn't move at all. Whereas in reality, if I moved, that thing would just wobble like mad. Right? But of course, the same thing on the other side. Yeah, if I move like that, it'll wobble. Right? But if I did it without physics, it just falls off. Because that doesn't have that special zone. This leads to some real cool things, which you probably, you might have actually seen, but I can guarantee you, you haven't understood it, right? Here's something really unusual, and I'm just going to try and hold, the problem with this chair is I can't hold it with one hand, and I'll explain that in a moment as well. But here you've got a chair. Now, when you put an object on this chair, for example, this canister, right? Ah, damn, I stand on the chair. For example, this canister, right? It actually stays in position. What that means is this area here is actually one of those zones, a special zone that holds objects. And that leads to something really cool because the game doesn't actually care how that object entered the zone. It only does the stuff when you're moving, when you're smooth locomoting, right? But it does it based on like what, what's in that zone. So watch what happens here. If I place objects in that zone, they start getting moved. <laughs> Look at that. Look at that. Like magic. They start getting moved because the game has them in that zone. Now, I haven't tried this myself, but I'm really curious to see what happens. If I place this can here and then put the chair so that there's an object in its zone, and then teleport. You can see. There it is. There it is. I teleported with the can. You see how that happens? That's because the game knows that if you've got some object in your in another object and you teleport, it has to move with that. So what you end up with is this really, really weird thing where you've got an object here. And then as soon as you teleport, you teleport with that object. <laughs> you could see the can was stuck inside the, the chair there. Really, really cool stuff. It's, it's the most unusual thing you've ever seen, but it makes sense once you understand why that's happening. And um, I don't know what, um, what, what, what I'm going to do here, because this video is probably going to get a little bit longer than this. I think I'm going to stop it here. There is so much more to talk about when it comes to hands and physics. One of those things is what I was complaining about just now, which is this chair. I can hold it with one, with two hands, but as soon as I try and hold it with one hand, it just detaches, right? It just automatically detaches. Now, we're going to talk about that as well, but I think I should end this video here. I left you with one unusual glitch or thing that, I, that you can do, and you can try that anywhere. So, for example, here, if we get through this section here, right? Skip this, I don't care. There we go. You can try it here with this chair, for example. And this chair is really cool because I can actually hold it with one hand, right? So that's really cool. What I can do here is place the chair. Oh, in fact, I'll place the chair like this because there's a zone on here as well. You can move things around on the chair. So if I was to take this object here and place it on there, you can move around while it's on the chair which is really cool, right? But obviously that means that I can move things that are on the shelf, <laughs> just like magic. I think I'm going to end the video here. That's the end of this video. Thanks very much for watching. If you're very curious as to what on earth is just, go, just you've just seen in this video, watch it over again, because it, it is a, a little very, a, a very weird thing to try and get your head around how the game has to do certain things because it needs to allow for smooth loco and teleporting, right? And all the extra things that come as a result of that, along with all the motion sickness things, which is like digitalizing the movement so that you're not accelerating smoothly. And then of course, how the hand physics work to not show all that lag. And you can really see that lag when you actually perform a crouch because with the crouch, 
there's none of that clever stuff. So that's what was happening here when you throw an object in here and you press the crouch button, they get thrown about. That's because there's none of that clever stuff, none of the fakery going on when you press the fake crouch. All it does is offset your real physical tracking, right? And you can see the hands get lagged behind and everything. And even these weird, these, these information things, like press and hold to toggle the menu, they're actually sitting on the physics hand. Everything seems to be sitting on the physics hand, with the exception of one thing. The menu hands. Ta-da! Anyways, I think I'm going to keep going too much on this video if I carry on. So we're going to leave it here. And there's going to be another part on how physics objects work when it comes to weight and, and how the game balances all of that. I am still working on the actual separate project. So you will see a, a, an attempted replication of some of this mechanical stuff uh, in my own Unity project as well. Until then, thanks very much for watching. Uh, any curiosities, once again, ask again in the comments. And uh, that's kind of the end of this video. Thanks very much for watching. Goodbye.